Hey, John and John, on Bayquest. On Bayquest. Um, yeah, guys, so bring it on. Bring it on. <laughs> How about it? How about it? it We're is... here for your leisure. <laughs> and just for you future viewers, <laughs> we are in lockdown here in yes. 2020. Yes, indeed. <laughs> just, just a few people that watch this in the future. Sure. We're on, in Melbourne here in Australia. We're in week three of lockdown. Week three. Week three. So it's fantastic. Um, you know, I'm sure if you do watch this in many years to come that you'll... Um, It'll be in the history books. Yes. <laughs> You'll be able to understand it a bit. You'll be laughing as much as we are. <laughs> yes. So, yes. Yeah. So, any, anyone out there, um, let us know if you've got any issues going on, any um, pains, any recurring problems. Just a lot of the stuff that goes on is the soul trying to get a message back to us. <laughs> or it's frequency stuff which we are going to this week. <laughs> We've got a new surprise for you, which we won't probably tap into this week. Nope. But um, yeah, so all our regular, all our regular guys, then they will see. Yeah, yeah they will get an update. They get an update automatically, intuitively, anyway. <laughs> um, but yes, we won't. We won't delve into it and talk about it we won't for scare you. until we, um, <laughs> you know, refine it ourselves. Yeah. So yes, anyone out there, drop a hello, um, wave to us, whatever you, whatever you do. Um, so yes, yeah, so if you've got any issues. Um, we help interpret through our intuition, through your intuition. So the number one thing is the intuition speaks up until a certain point anyway through it feeling lighter or heavier or expanded or contracted. So the truth will set you free. The truth feels light. The truth feels expanded. Um, and, and the lie or the untruth will feel heavier and lock you up. So the truth will set you free and the lie will lock you up. Truth might piss you off before it sets you free sometimes. Occasionally it does. Josh. Occasionally it does. Occasionally. Like, ah. Only for a moment, though. <laughs> so, hi, everyone. Karen, um, Kim, Kim, Natalie. Natalie. Hello. Hi, guys. Hello. Uh, hello. Hello. So, yes, we're just we're just talking to some of our possible future viewers and telling them we're on <laughs> lockdown here in Melbourne in week three, 2020 lockdown. So they'll probably read all about it in the history books if they watch this live in a few years to come. Yep. Um, so, yes, we're just... Just in case we get on topic about having, that, having a future chat. <laughs> yeah, so we're having, having a future chat because we, you know, we realised when we started our meditation class last Thursday um, that you know some of the people are going to watch this in the long future from now. So it's nice to just update them where we're at, you know, so that they can take things in you know in context. It's like you know this is a lot of the problem with the old biblical stuff with getting it out of context. So one of the sayings, you know, it's easier for a, um, a rich man to enter kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, than it, it's, it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of the needle than it is for a rich man to um, for, for a rich man to enter heaven. Now the camel passing through the eye of the needle back in those biblical times was that the, the walls of the cities had big gates, and at night times they'd close them, and at the side there was a little triangular door, like a, a, a needle shaped doorway which was just about five foot high. And if you came at night with your camel, you had to be a really good camel driver and get your camel down on his knees and get him to crawl through. Otherwise, and most of the camels wouldn't do it. So only a really good camel driver could get them in. And so, you know, we, we take those. So that means if you are rich and you're wealthy and you want to be in, you just got to be really good and skilled. So it's not, it's not impossible. It's not literally like taking a camel through the eye of the needle. So we've got to look at context, guys. We... We, you know, we hear all these sayings, we drop these truths on there, but we don't really read them enough and listen to the context. So that's just a little little tidbit. That's just my tidbit for the night. <laughs> that's his story, as we say. <laughs> that's my story. That's my story. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll read this out because it's um, – but I'm, I'm not too sure, Rebecca, um, maybe you might want to add another question, but I'll read it anyway. I lost my dad in May last year, was made redundant on the 19th of March, and the person I thought loved me as much as I loved them dumped me last year. So I'm feeling quite depressed and bereft. And bereft. Okay. Um, so, look, in, in the spiritual tradition, um, you know, a teacher like myself would would praise this because because the short period of time that these, these massive... Um, Life um, changes, life changes, sh shocks, you know, to the system. You know, when they come simultaneous like that, you know, I, I, you know, had three in a row a couple of years ago. I got, you know, my mum died. I just got back from burying her and I had an eviction notice on the door of my warehouse with a guy with an eviction notice the day after I buried my mum. 
And then that same day, my daughter rings up and she's pregnant and says she's splitting up with her with her husband while she's pregnant. And it's like all that happened in one week. And it's like, and that was that's like a sign from the heavens, I say, to mm. the, the inside. It's like, you know, that it's just you know, there's no such thing as coincidence. So, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, this is the universe, the soul, something trying to give you a wake-up call. And because you're so, de- what did you say, de- depressed and um, bereft. bereft of hope, it is a perfect time to open up to new possibilities, to really open up. You know, some of the biggest miracle um, events I've been involved in on me personally and with other people have been at times like that. You know, the day I split up, the, one of the first massive ones I had was the day I split up with my ex-wife and, and my three children when I was in my late 20s. Not me. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, that night I went to this group of weird spiritual people at the time, as I called them. Um, and, you know, I was, I was smashed up from motorbike accidents and I could barely bend and touch my knees. And this guy did this healing and my body, it was just literally a miracle. I can't, I won't even go into details of it. We've got it on our YouTube. Yeah. Um, but that was because I was so open and raw, like, like you're talking about. I was like, okay, show me, lead me, guide me. You're, you're, it opens you up to really the, the possibilities. And that's when, so when I do a healing with people, I do the same healing every time. And the energy that comes through is the same energy every time what happens for the person whether they feel like they've just had a good nice massage or whether that literally changed their life and whether they literally have a physical miracle is all up to how open they are mm. and a lot of that is what we call the, you know the crisis point how big a crisis are they going through and the crisis that opens you up as i was joking with my older son today um his crisis when he was 23 that opened him up which he, he still hasn't sort of come to terms with that, that that's the thing that got into this stage um was bankruptcy that's all it took for him because he was so obsessed at that stage with you know making money and getting big in business and stuff like that so he thought his whole life was over mm. and that opened him up enough other people like myself have to have a crash and near-death experience and <laughs> mother die and, you know and and, my, my story is similar as well and we actually had a couple of people um bring up similar things last week mm-hmm. so, so it seems to be quite yeah quite common at the moment i guess yeah. you know people getting to that surrender point as we say you know same for me i had just before my marriage ended, 17 years married with three kids, about four months before that, my father-in-law at the time, he passed away. My marriage um, for 17 years had split up and then a month later, not even a month later, my father um, uh, he's ended up in prison. Um, so three quite significant things all within yeah. a six-month period for yeah. me, you know, and that was the beginning of where I am today. So, so what that does is it, we call it the surrender point, um, crisis moment, whatever. And for most of us, there's, there's three paths. There's three main, or there's five main paths to God, but the three main ones is through devotion, through emptiness like Zenism. Mm. Devotion is more like Sufism, or the most, most of the Western way. Ours is through crisis, and so that's when we open up to other possibilities and that. And so it really makes us question. And the opening up is is just a matter of going, like inside. I'm sure you've already said this somehow through feelings or whatever. There's got to be more to life than this. You know, there's, there's some form of that question happens at these, at these moments. So this is why you're on, on a show like this particularly, right? So it's, it's, a, it's a process. And it's like, so, you know, just so what, what I say is lead me and guide me and then just trust. You know, you've got, sounds like you've got nothing else to do except trust. Mm. So you just look for the guidance. You know, things will pop up. Like I went to that thing. I actually found a flyer on the floor of my car the day I was picking up my ex-wife and, you know, I didn't know where it came from. I'd obviously picked it up from somewhere, but I just looked over when I was sitting there in the driveway going, where am I going to go? What am I going to do? And it was just there. I'm sure it was there for ages and I hadn't seen it. And, you know, these things, you will be led and guided just through your intuition. Just look at things and go, okay, well, you know. And when you go to them, surrender. Just go, well, you know, I don't know. What if this is possible? What if this is true? Yeah. What if is, is it important? You have to believe it. But you have to be genuine, sorry. And to be genuine... You have to get to a point where you believe it. Now, if you don't believe it, you can say, what if? What if? Maybe. That will bring you to a point of genuineness. What if this is true? What if this works? I wonder. You know, these, these things will make you more genuine. You can't say, hey, okay, I'll believe it, and you don't. Because <laughs> that just blocks it out. You know, it doesn't. It literally does not work if you're not genuine. So if you can't be 100% genuine on your absolute belief, you're 100% genuine on your maybe. Hundred percent genuine. I'm not sure. What if Mm. I'm open to find out? You know. So okay. Next. Sorry. Um. Yeah. So you know, to it's it's not going to be a short trip. 
It's not going to be a short mm. fix. But look at it that you can you can either look at it as bringing you down, or you can look at it as tearing you open to the infinite and use it yeah. to raise out the ashes like the phoenix. Yeah, it's not easy, and but most of us go through it. Okay, Kim. Hey, Kim. What lie do I have? And I'm going to try to say this right. <laughs> bursitis. I have bursitis in my bum cheek. Here, <laughs> I don't even know what bursitis is, but bursitis it sounds is, but it sounds funny. <laughs> bursitis is um, you know it's quite funny if you go to the, the medical. Way because I give you a needle with adre um, adrenaline um, hormone, human health, growth hormone, and oh, adre um, whatever, GHB, whatever it is. Well, yeah, like, like that stuff. And so I got it in my shoulders once. But anyway, um, the burst, <laughs> burst starts in the bum cheek. That's a new one, right? Because it's usually, so that, I'm guessing that must be the hip because it's usually in the joints yeah, area. So, hip, yeah. yeah, so. Um, so the, which, which, which hip? Left yeah, or right? left or right, Kim. <laughs> left or right, Kim. Um, and it's not necessarily, a, it's, remember, we, we joke about it being a lie and that the lie is our interpretation of it. The lie is that, you know, that it's a physical problem that can't be fixed through the emotions, through the um, understanding the message, right? So it's not necessarily a lie, you know, it's like, so hip, first of all, before we get into the left and right, the hip area, and that is about the base chakra. So this is issues you've got and build up issues with any groups. <laughs> so if it's on the, you know, the bigger groups in the world are males and females. Um, humans, it's the biggest group. Yep. You know, then we come down to smaller groups like the, um, the school, the government, they are family, just our brothers. If you've got three brothers, they're a group. You know, if, if any, any group which is above three people. Okay. Left. Left, left side, but also the right sometimes. But okay, so, so basically all the issues you have with the groups and you might have a big issue with the general group said so left and right. So left is also spiritual, guys, and right is also physical and material. So the, you might have an issue with the world. And the, She says, yeah, I need some kind of healing that I'm so sick and tired of being in pain. So maybe yeah. it's pain somehow related yeah. to, to the groups. Yeah, so the sick, sick and tired of being in pain. So one of the things that we first have to get to is the willingness to get to a genuine forgiveness. Now, genuine forgiveness is difficult for most people because we have all these skew with ideas. Forgiveness is really just closure, just letting it go, saying, you know, I don't know, maybe they did it on purpose, maybe they didn't, maybe it's fucked up, maybe it's not. Um, you know, it's generally going, I don't care anymore, I'm going to leave that up to the universe to sort out, and I'm just going to go on and start moving forward. So the healing side of things, um, you know, this is all, all the judgments, all the the, the build-up, it's, it's a real build-up bursitis, it's like, you know, and it's there's so many... You know resentments because it's in in the bones mostly mm. mostly so there's a lot of resentments there to just build up build up over time you know with the family groups the government groups you know religions um races all sorts of things and it can go right into the soul so ask how do i get rid of this resentment how do i you know the the healing energy is on offer i can feel it yep. it's there it's on offer there is uh, an allowance from you and allow the allowance is a twofold allowance so you've got to say yes i'm willing to but it also means i'm willing to let go of whatever attitude whatever negative emotions that i've allowed and don't think that you created all these negative emotions guys you know resentment guilt shame it's a lot of it we're coerced into through society from childhood we're we're, we're tricked into it we're, we're programmed into it so for, to let it go, you, you're letting it go because you bought into it accidentally or you're co coerced into it. Coercion. Not because you're a bad person. Not because, you know, you just got sucked in to starting to resent, you know. At the core, when you're in your infinite being, when you're in your true self, we don't. We don't care. We are We are forgiveness. That is what we actually are. That's, you know, we are love. We are power. We are glory. We are all these things at the truth. And so we get coerced and tricked into these negative emotions, shame, blame, guilt. That's what we've got to let go of. And if we look at it on the base chakra, it's the, sh the shame, blame, guilt, resentment we have to any groups. So our family is a group. You know, the, our country members are a group. Um, as I said, women in general, men in general are a group. So, so Kim's very fastly jumped to the only group I hate <laughs> the only group of people I hate are the dead Chinese feeding dogs and beautiful animals. Well, and uh, so some, sometimes when we jump to a very quick conclusion <laughs> about something, Kate, uh, sorry, Kim, uh, means that there's quite potentially lots of other groups that you actually hate. Yes. 
and and there is a lot of again there's a lot of coercion in your in that comment there mm. that first of all the the way you say that damn chinese for eating dogs and, and beautiful animals first of all eating dogs what's the difference between eating dogs and eating you know pigs you know we eat cows indians you know we go over to india they're sacred animals they're god they can't understand how we do that do they hate us for doing that no they most of them don't you know and the other beautiful animals they eat how many have made it? You know, how many Aussies go out and fucking kill lions and that? Not a lot of us, but, you know, two or three of them get on the, on the internet and everyone goes, damn, Aussies kill lions, you know. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of program in that. You don't know any of that stuff. Mm. And the hate word, I hate, is what we've got to get rid of. That's what we've got to get rid of. That's what we've got to – you don't hate. At the core, at the heart, you do not hate. Your true being, you're, you're, you're a god at, at the centre, at your true being. That you does not hate that your true self does not hate. So that hate has been, you've been coerced, tricked into it, programmed into it. We all have, right? And through media, through all sorts of things. That's what we need to get out of. This is what caught, you know, fear, hate is fear, because they're cruel. How do you know it's How cruel? How do you know it's cruel? No, what, what's cruel? That's a point of view. They cooked them alive. You know, how do you know this? You've, you, you, how do you, have you been there? Have you seen, and how many, are, and I'm not saying they don't. Yeah. I'm, what I'm saying is how many do that? Yeah. You know, you know, if you go to any any group, any society, there is cruelty. There is mass cruelty. And, but it's not, it's not isolated not, to one we're race. Not, we're, not, we're not trying to make this okay. Yeah. What, what we're trying to point out, out here is that, yeah. you know, China's a large country, a large country, right? There's, you know, millions and millions, if not billions of people. And and what, what you're doing by saying this, I hate, I hate, uh, the damn Chinese, right? So by yeah. virtue of the fact of that one yeah. statement, you're hating every single yeah. Chinese person because you're yeah. making making a decision yeah. based on based on what is what we're questioning that they all eat yeah, exactly. dogs and beautiful animals, yeah. right? And, and what we're saying is that that's not necessarily true. Yeah, right? and how many? And like how many? How do we know this? You right? Know? This, you and, know? and so and so you're harboring hate for an entire race of like you know race of people, yeah, right? For and the I, actions of how many? I'm sorry to say this. But if it wasn't for the Chinese and for Chinese medicine, I would not be able to deliver half of what I'm delivering to you now. Mm. They're beautiful medicine that the Chinese have. Mm. They're, they're, every society has beauty and every society has cruelty. Cruelty to animals. That you know, I grew up in Newtown in Sydney and some of the dog fighting in, that, in, the, in the Hazel area that I grew up, it was insanely cruel, stuff that you couldn't even, I wouldn't even bear to speak again, right? So, and these were Aussies. These were our neighbours. So, you know, the... Cruelty is not isolated to any race, mm. and we're, we're programmed to hate races. We're, that's what they want us to do. That's what this fear mongering is doing. Fear is the enemy. Hate is fear. Resentment is fear. Jealousy is fear. Envy is fear. All these negative emotions are a form of fear. Love, faith, courage, that's what we need to do. Mm. And it's not to say that, and it's not to justify, like, um, forgiveness doesn't make it okay. Forgiveness lets it go for change to happen. Mm. You know, eye for an eye does not work. If it did, the world would be in a better place. And that's what it is, you know. That's what hate is. It's an eye for an eye. So, you know, I mean, we talk about this week on week, right? And and what, what we see and what we react to, right, on the outside is in us on the inside. Yes. Right? So if, if we park the fact for, for the moment that it's, you know, per, perceived to be cruelty to animals, right? Just park that fact, right? What you're seeing here is you're, 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 you're basically harboring hate yeah. and everything associated to hate yeah. because of what you're seeing, right? Yeah. Whether it's right or wrong, good or bad or whatever, right? And so because that's triggering you, right, and you're creating hate or, or you're identifying with hate, yeah. The hate and, and the resentment is what what John's that's saying. The that's, that's the bursitis. That's the bursitis, right? Yeah. right? That's exactly what we're what we're talking about. We're not we're not talking about and, and, trying to, and, and trying to justify what people might do with animals and how people cook animals and lobster the elky point elky's point all that things. What they what, what we what we teach is what we're trying to show you is those things that trigger you, right, are in you somewhere. And right? guys, this is for all of you. This is this is this is why this path is so difficult mm. at first, right? It is, but it is so powerful. And so once you see this, mm. isn't it cruel to hate an entire race because of what a minority do? Mm. You think it, you might think it's a majority, but I can guarantee you it's not. And I can guarantee you the Chinese and their medicine and their art is some of the most brilliant in the world. These people are brilliant, you know. So hate 
hating the whole Chinese. So, yeah. so Kim, I didn't mean the whole Chinese race, she says. I know you didn't. We, we but know that, we, right? But, but your emotions did. But listen to your words, right? Yeah. The damn Chinese, right? That's a filter. Mm. That's what we call you a filter. Didn't, this is what we call on the right? threefold flame. You, so your head doesn't mean this. None, yeah. of our, none of us do, right? When we get into resentment, when I get into these emotions that I find in myself still, I don't believe it anymore. I've yeah. done fucking 20 years of therapy on that shit. I don't fucking believe it at all. But I find it in my words like that. My yeah. emotions are still holding on to it. And those emotions feed the subconscious and the subconscious drives our actions. Yep. And if we don't clear it by seeing that, why you don't mean the whole race? Why did you say it? Why did you say it then? This is what we're going to look at. This you is know, the two what, wires we're what, going to put together. What? Everybody, everybody here, listen. These are the wires we're going to put together. This is this is how the this healing a happens. Great example. This is a perfect example. We don't mean it. We don't even believe it. Mm. Yet, if we listen to our emotional reaction and our emotional words, that will tell us that that's still in there. Mm. And those emotions are mainly from the waist down, mm. and that's what causes a lot of our ailments. This is this is the core of mm. everything here we're teaching. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> this is you know the, a brilliant example. Yeah. And don't worry, is it, who was it? it's um, Kim? Kim, don't worry, Kim. You know, we're not isolating you. This this is hitting every one of oh, our listeners at the moment, right? Everyone. It's hitting everyone. We do this on a daily basis. Mm. You know, I've been doing this for 20 years and I still catch them. Mm. I've still caught plenty in the last week. Little resentments, little, you know, frustrations. They're all negative and they're all trapped in our subconscious. And that's okay. Once we see it, ha-ha, brilliant. Now we go, okay, show me how to get rid of this hatred. Yeah. Show me how to get rid of this. It's cruel. You know, to to say that, you know, and that puts into the collective consciousness that that emotion, emotion backed up like emotion creates the law of attraction more than anything else. I don't care what our thoughts are. They don't create the law of attraction without the emotion. The emotion is 80 percent of it. And if the emotion yeah. is unseen and unknown, it's so just running random. If 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 you're willing to, Kim, right, if if you can, if you can just park the, the, the Chinese meat topic. <laughs> Right, and and if if you can get to a what if, my reaction to seeing that is somehow related to my bursitis. What if that emotion right? of hatred? What if, what if that emotion is is somehow in me causing yeah. the bursitis? What if that's yeah. possible? If you can get to that 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 yeah. genuine maybe. What yeah. if that is the case? If you get if you get rid of that hatred, and that does not mean guys, to getting rid of the hatred, getting rid of these negative emotions does not mean approving of. Mm. Cruelty does not mean it means getting to a neutral place and go, okay, on the grand scheme of things, what's crueler? You know, okay. human trafficking, all, all of this stuff, it's there. These things are locked up in our emotions. Unless we put these two together, most of you people on here have worked all this stuff out in your heads. Mm. And a lot of you people have done it for 10 years and it's not working. Mm. Otherwise, you wouldn't be listening to us fucking crazy cunts. It's like, <laughs> seriously, you know, we're the last court, court of call for most people, right? Mm. It's like, because we've worked it out up here and maybe even in here, but we haven't worked it out in our emotions. emotions. Yeah. And it's like this is what we listen to. This is these key words, right? It's not that we think you're you're cruel or anything else, mm. but those emotions are putting into it. And those emotion when emotions are put behind thoughts or feelings, they're amplified. And that goes out to everyone. And then but again, we're coerced. We're coerced through the media. We're coerced through all these things, these professionals we see on TV. So, you know, don't take it so personally. Yeah. Just go, what if I bought into that shit and it's not entirely true? Yeah. And what if I'm creating it more by, you know, hatred? What if I'm adding to that? Mm. I'm adding to cruelty just by having hatred harboring inside myself at all. Mm. So I'm adding to cruelty, whatever the cruelty is. Yeah. So what if I could let that go? And what if that wasn't entirely my fault? What if that's something I got sucked into? And what if I let that go? What if I change that and go and send, you know, send love and grace to them? Ask, hoping your, that they ask, get past yourself, it. ask yourself these questions, Kim. Yes. The healing's on offer, you know. If you can get to yeah. that point of, of the possibility. And this is, again, guys, this is what we're talking about, genuine. Mm. You've got to be genuine about this. If you're not genuine about it, don't ask. Don't bother. You're just going to waste your time. You're going to make it worse, right? Mm. Or if you can't be genuine straight up, repeat it, repeat mm. it, repeat it until you do get genuine. Mm. You know, how do I get rid of this hatred? How do I get past this point of hatred? Hatred doesn't help. I don't have to make it right or wrong, but what if I sent grace? What if I tried to project grace to them? Maybe that would help stop them because I can guarantee you hatred is only going to make them do it more. Yeah. And so, you know, we what if what if these words and we have to get us genuine? And it's like, you know, 
these are these are the things we have to do. And again, guys, we're not. A, there's no accusations here. Yeah. We're all coerced into it. We're all got fucking overload of media and information that we believe is true. We're told it's true because it's the news. You know, it's like how much of these beliefs are yours? Where did you get them from? Yeah. So I, I guess Amanda's saying it seems mean just be aware of your thoughts. Yes. No, but, no, not at all. Well, <laughs> not your thoughts. The, 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 well, the, sorry, not your thoughts. The words that come out. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. So, yes, be aware of the words. Watch your actions yeah. and your words. Your actions and your words will mean more. Thoughts, words, and actions. This is the threefold flame, mind, body, soul. It's three parts. Yeah. I watch the actions. I listen to the words when people are frustrated. That will tell me what's in the emotions. We can't see the emotions very easily at first, guys. Even at... Even much later on, when you're at this place that I am, it's it's still hard to see the emotions. I've still got to watch these reactions, these things that make me because I'm really smart. I don't say it out loud anymore, <laughs> <laughs> so I can really trick myself into thinking yeah. I've got no negative emotions. Yeah. So I've got to watch these little silent reactions I have inside yeah. to catch mine, right? And so then I go, well, that reaction of resentment or that reaction of blame doesn't match my belief system where I'm at. So there's the problem. Therein lies the problem. Where did I buy that? How come I haven't let go of that? How do I get to forgiveness? How do I get the, you know, closure with that? I should be just sending love to everyone. Love will change the world. Look, try, you know, grace, you know, these will change. Hatred, you know, if you want more of something, you put more in. You want to get rid of hatred? You can't put hatred into it. You know, you fight fire with fire, the whole fucking world burns up. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know. So, um, the crystals I'm wearing, Kim, by the way, are selenite, and I've also got a big selenite disc here. I'm yeah. kind of really drawn to selenite. Right? Okay. All right. Way, okay, way so, back up here. Yeah, so we you know, we went on about that one, guys, because that was for everybody, yeah. and that was just such a good example. Yeah. It's not in her belief system at all. You know, In fact, it's probably the furthest thing from, but just that emotion, that yeah. emotion comes out with it, and that's, what's our, that's our subconscious that's loaded up. Yeah. That's how we catch this stuff. And as soon as she puts the two and two together, as soon as any of you guys put those two and two together, bang, that's when the healing will happen. Yeah. You know, it might take a couple of days if it's if there's a lot of hate about what other groups do I have hate towards? You know, she thinks she's, that's the one that's obvious. Once that one releases, there might be just like domino <laughs> effects. A barrage of groups that all of a sudden <laughs> yeah, hate. You know, <laughs> I fucking hate the Christians. Or I hate no, the, and there's, know. there's a large part of how we do our sessions, yeah, right? We exactly. talk to people and we just listen to the words that come out, right? And a lot of the time yeah. they'll say words. And then you'll question them about that word, and they'll have that same response as I didn't say that. That's not what I meant. It's like, well, they're the words that you use. <laughs> they're the words that came out. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, way back, way back up to Hunter. Ah. Um, I have a ganglion on my inner left wrist, yep. my dominant hand. So painful at times. Any meaning? Okay. Website? So generally, the ganglion is generally a calcium buildup, um, and the left wrist. <laughs> another one of my favorites, guys. Remember, guys, we laugh at this every time I laugh, and every time we laugh, we're not laughing at you. Yeah. We're laughing at the mirror because this is usually issues that we've just either just worked through or worked through not too long ago. Yeah. So, you know, I can I can feel my one still clearing on my left wrist. So um, basically the left wrist and the ankles and wrists have got more to do with the navel chakra. So this is any issues we've got one-on-one -on -one with people. So, and the left is generally spiritual, although left-handed it can sometimes be reversed. Usually not, but can be. Left can be masculine if you're a left-hander and left-footer. But generally, it's spiritual and female, and but it's one-on-one -on -one issues. So all the resentments, all the negative emotions you've got to any one-on-one. -on -one, so the fights you've had with friends, with loved ones, the disagreements you've had with people, the the any negative emotions you hold towards. I would I'm saying female. Uh, yeah. It feels like female. So you know, like by them, maybe they emotionally manipulated or whatever. Um, I don't know if Hunter, if you're male or female yourself. Um, so it could be resentment towards you, the way you've dealt with all the people who have the one-on-one -on -one issues. It can be like like a what I call a reverse resentment or frustration where you're actually inflexible. resentful. Inflexible. Yeah, comes from, yeah, yeah, inflexible with yourself for either being too harsh when you deal with people or too soft and not standing up for yourself. It can be either side of this. But there's a resentment, there's a build-up, and because it's because it, the ganglion sort of attaches to the bone and it's calcium, it's resentment issues, yeah. and it's about one-on-one. -on -one. You're resentful to the way you deal with them, or they deal with you, or both. Yeah. So you're look, and there's a whole bunch of one-on-ones here. There's like <laughs> you know, you know your ex, your ex, you know your kid, your fucking dad, your you know your mother, you know your boss, your friends, 
all these one-on-one -on -one issues where you feel hard done by or you know you're just not being flexible enough to to let it go and change it and you know a lot of times you know the old way of the ganglion they get a big heavy book like a hard cover bible oh, and they smash yeah, it right I heard about that. and it pops it's because the calcium ball the ganglion it's actually hollow inside and it does it. But what does that do also? Like on, a, <laughs> on an energetic level when you do that, fucking hurts, right? <laughs> <laughs> so that pain and that shock can often make you let go of all that stuff instantly. Yeah. They can go, oh, fuck it. And just like, you know, all right, done, get out of here. I want to start again. So it's like, you know, there's there's lots of build-ups there. And that's what this is what the pains are often getting us to, the, what we call the surrender point. Okay, so, you know. These ones tonight seem to be really deep and really connected. So yeah, yeah. in the short time we've got, <laughs> the, these ones, some of these ones, are, when they're so deep and when they're connected to so many different things, they're really not going to be, you know, we're not going to get to the bottom of it in 10 minutes, guys. So you're really going to have to say, you know, what if that stuff is true? Show me how, what if I could see it? What if I could let go of these issues I have with all these one-on-ones with people? Karen. Karen Bennett, uh, when my father passed, I had him cremated. I couldn't afford a burial. I'm um, feeling so guilty. Will he forgive me? I still have his ashes. I can't let them go. Um, of course he will forgive you. <laughs> it's just that there's no need for him to forgive you. There's no, on the other side, we're back into our pure God self, our soul's infinite again. So we've it's already forgiven. We just laugh about it all. You know, we get over the other side with our enemies and we sit there and laugh and go, thanks for being a cunt to me. You know? <laughs> so, you know. I'll be saying that. Don't worry. <laughs> so, don't worry. So we, you know, he, you don't, he doesn't need to forgive us. But what you do need to do is to let him go. Not the ashes. Yeah. Him. Him. Have closure with it. Let him go. Because yeah. a lot often we keep some sort of attachment to them. We don't let them pass over. Yeah. And when we let them go, then they can finish their, their thing. And then there is this period when we let them go. Usually, most most of us, if we do it gracefully, we they stay around for you know anything up to a week after they die. Then they pass over and they go through you know spiritual hospital as I call it, um, which can take up to like twenty one days or twenty eight days. It takes roughly about a month, and then they come back more in their pure self in their pure form. So when we don't let go, we, we keep attachments to them. So you know, let them pass over and let them sort of. Then you, you've got to go through that little bit of a void, and you've got to let go of your guilt. Not his guilt and the guilt you have of what you didn't say. Yeah, it's and what right you, side, yeah, yeah. yeah, super right. It's side. all your guilt about you know what you didn't say for him, how you didn't love him, how you didn't make. And no, I'm not saying you didn't love him, how you didn't express the love to him. What? It, oh wow! That's he's cool. laughing, by the way. Yeah. He's like, yeah. just scattered he, the he, fucking ashes in the wind. Were you? <laughs> he's all good. He's all good. He's all good. Yeah. Like a fuck of yeah. Yeah. You, out of you, need to, right you need to really let go of your guilt of what Oof. you did or didn't do because <laughs> that fucking hurts. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, and it's all it seems a lot of it be around the heart area. Yeah, so yeah, right. you know, whatever you didn't do, whatever it, like yeah. one of the things I did with say with my real mother who died when I was ten, I went down and I wrote letters afterwards. Mm. And then burnt the letters and you know, sorry I didn't say this, sorry I didn't say that, and you know, I love this and I love that. So express both sides, express, you know, your grievances and express your your condolences and Express, you know, both parts. Write it down in a letter and let it be done. They can hear it. They can feel it. They're always around you. So, you know, that's, um, you know, it's it's our guilt that we've got to let go of, not theirs. But they won't, they don't hold anything against us. Not once they're over that side anyway. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, dun, 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 dun. I'm just scrolling back up because we've had so many comments. Yeah. Right. So somebody I just saw a brief on there. Somebody said don't hold on to anger. Yeah. Also, what we do when we some people mistake that when they say don't hold on to it and they bury it inside themselves and they okay. push it down, right? Um, so just be careful of that. It's something we went through and my son and that last week. Um, the difference between letting it out and letting it out in a proper way, or we let anger come up. Because anger takes us out of poor me, out of self-pity. We let the anger come up, but allow, don't let the anger to sit there. We drive it to courage and drive the courage to bring ourselves up to the heart. Mm. So use the anger. Use it to make yourself not do it again. Make yourself get to a point where you, you surrender and you let it go and you make yourself a better person and bring yourself up to the heart, bring the courage. Yeah. Let the anger turn, so, make you um, bring up your courage. Kim, um, if I need to let go of anger to get rid of this uh, pain, I'll work on it. My guides are saying, no, yeah. don't, don't do it. Ask for it to yeah. be healed. Yeah. Okay. So this, and, this is more the point that we're making, right? And the let going of the anger, it's not letting go. Use the anger. Mm. 
the poor me, the sorrow, the self-pity is worse than anger. It's a lower vibration. It's a lower frequency. Anger is slightly higher. It's better than self-pity. So that's why you're holding on to anger, but you're holding anger in the solar plexus here, right? It's supposed to be there temporarily to transform, to flip around, turn that anger into courage to bring yourself up to the heart. Use the anger to transform, to burn away the resistance, to burn away the need to hold on to it. John said the gods, you know, ask and show me how to do that. Show me how to turn this anger into courage. Show me how to raise it up to the heart and turn it into a useful thing. That doesn't mean condone any of the actions. That means how do I send the frequency, the vibration that's going to help people to change? You know, so how do I send compassion to those that are in the negative stuff? That, mm. if, if, you, if we all send compassion to the people doing the worst cruel things, they will either have to receive it and stop or the compassion energy will surround them so much that they'll either have to pass away and go over or they'll have to transform, you know. It's <laughs> like, but, you know, if we hate their hatred, then you yeah. know, we're just on the, we're on a roundabout. Okay. Jane Williams, I felt a tingling sensation on the top of my head. Crown, what does it mean? Um, generally speaking, the crown chakra is about one inch or so above the head. So the tingling sensation is as the crown or inspiration opens up and it comes down. So our inspiration from, from above, let's call it, even though the, the God self is in the heart, but it yeah. connects from above as well. So that tingling sensation is usually when we get a realisation, an opening, yeah. some inspiration comes in. And it's like, and this is where pain, negativity and things can cause blockages. So if there's a fear somewhere else, if there's a deep fear somewhere, that inspiration comes in. And, you know, this is how my whole journey started fucking 28 <laughs> years ago. <right? laughs> I was fucking... I didn't believe any of this stuff and I would get deja vu and I'd know I had this dream two years before and it would open up, the energy would come down and my fears because I just hated everything and I fucking was chaos theory to the max. And the fear would block the inspiration coming in and my body, and quite a lot of it happened when I was driving and my body would start burning up. So the fear, the, insp the inspiration comes in, the fear blocks it. If the inspiration comes in, it goes all the way through and to the base. That will change us. That will transform us. Yeah. And so that little bit of tingling is the inspiration coming in. So what, what I often do at that stage, say if there's any fear, if there's any fears, different, whatever fear is, fear can be as simple as as doubt. Mm. Doubt is a fear. Questioning. Um, so, you know, get rid of the fears that are blocking any of this. So sometimes the tingling is that there's a little bit of resistance yeah. to receiving that inspiration. Thanks, John. <laughs> <laughs> For me, at times, I've got them doing this in my head. It's like, go let it in, let it in. It's like, right now, I've got one right here. Go, let me in. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> and the more it's... it's like, I've gone past tingling to... They're fucking like... The more inspiration that you open up to... Let go, the John. The let go, John. Let go, have. John. <laughs> I can go from a little tingle to like an axe in your head. So I can really <laughs> fucking can hurt. hurt. It can hurt like hell when... <laughs> The inspiration is trying to come in, but the fears are blocking it. It's like, okay, whatever oh fears are blocking this, help me let go of the fears, help me let go of the fears. Right, 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 it's right, just like, right. help me let go of the fears and just right. repeat it. You know, breathe deep into the belly. Help me let go of the fears because, <laughs> you know, the more inspiration that comes, the more it will hurt. <laughs> Ow! That hurt. Thanks. You should see when we go through the private session thank you, sometimes. Thank you. Thank you for that one. <laughs> All right. Amanda. Thanks, Amanda. We think that too. Yeah. Um, yeah, Lily Hart, Lily's like, I wrote some powerful fuck you revocations to help shift dark entities from psychic attacks. Pow, pow. Yeah. I fucking hear. Okay, so the, just a, a quick one on this, guys, and I this is a new hear. one. But one of the things you can do, the, the dark entities, psychic attacks, you can. there's two questions you can ask. Is that me? Mm. And if it's anything negative, you know it's not because mm. the real you is not negative, it's not fearful, it's not nothing. Yep. So you just say, yeah, are you me? It'll say, yeah, I'm you. It's like, well, you can't be because you just talk to me. Fuck, I got you. <laughs> you just got caught. It's like, I'm you. It's like, how can you say that? I can hear you saying it. And so it's like, you, it's like you, you hear a thought and you ask that thought, who are you? I'm you. How the fuck can you be me? Because <laughs> I just asked you and you're answering me. And the other one is, if it's more frequency based, mm. just ask what the opposite counter frequency is, the counter um, destructive frequency, mm. and put that frequency into wherever it is, and then back. double it, triple it, and times it by a gazillion. And, and you know, sometimes that shit will just free up. <laughs> it's fucking yeah. Don't tell the people that. One. Don't tell the people that one. <laughs> it's like, but yeah. Keep, you might want to rewind that and play it again. It takes a little bit of, you've got to do it exactly as I just said it. And it takes belief and it takes what if belief. Yep. So, but do that, guys, and they're in trouble, I can tell you.
<laughs> this is the one we weren't going to tell you this week, but you know, mm. had to let it slip out of the bag then. Okay. Okay, so what do we got? Um, where are we going? How can how can I help? There's, there's there are three people that have because basically asked the same thing. People that are concerned about other people. Yeah. There's one there which is Kim. There's one there which is Mel, and there was another one. Yeah. Okay. Bit so what, one of the so, okay. Let's let's cover this in one go. Yeah. How do you fix up? How do you do something for other people? First of all, we can't do anything for anyone that doesn't allow it. We have to ask their permission. So when I ask people, I have to get them to ask somebody if this was possible to do the distant healing, would you like it done? So they have to give you permission, first of all. Secondly, is to stop seeing them as defenseless. And this is the most important part. See them as divinely guided, divinely protected. Focus on what they look like, what they feel like as their God, pure self, whatever you want to call that, you know, as their pure um, divine self. What does that look like? And just picture that over and over again. See them free. See them infinite. See them invincible. See them all loving. The more you do that and the more you hold that picture with emotion, mm -hmm. with thought, the sooner the possibility for them to come out is. While you worry about them, you're adding to the problem. Yeah. Your fear. You're compounding it. Your, and it, and it come, I understand it comes from compassion, right? Mm -hmm. But you, on a frequency level, on a pure vibration level, by worrying about their problem, you're adding to their problem. So the first thing to do is to just keep visualizing them, seeing them, feeling them as liberated, as happy, as healthy, as whole, which is what their pure, true, divine soul is. All of ours is. We're all gods. Most of us are just pretending not to be. You know, so. Kate, Kate Larkin, can I ask a question? <laughs> I believe you just did. You may ask another one, Kate, by all means. <laughs> Um, Love Life from Very Miami. Cool. Hello. I uh, yeah. wanted to ask you a question. I've been having lower left hip problems. Uh, why do you think this is? Okay. So if we go back to earlier in the live, guys, we really covered this hip issue. It is group issues. So if it's in the back of the hip, the pain, it's group issues about the past. If it's in the front of the hips, it's group issues. So any group, again, is like human race is a group. Yeah. Men are a group. Women are a group. Your little, little sewing group. Anything of about three, group, any, group. anything about three people is a group, right up to the whole humanity is a group. So the government is a group. You know, the school friends, your friends are a group. So group issues in the front. If you the pain and that is in the front, your issues about groups. You know, oh, where's the world going at the moment? Where's money going? That's stopping me from moving forward, right? So that's worrying in the future. It's in the past. It's old issues, old emotions about groups, yeah. resentments, shames, guilts, judgments, hatred. No, it's like these ones, uh, they build up in the in the, the base chakra area is, you know, just below, halfway sort of wet on the belt line and into the hip area. The navel is just, you know, an inch or two above, below the navel to just above the navel area, solar plexus. So the navel area is more one-on-one -on -one issues. And, and so if we work out what they are, then we sort of work out how to let go of whatever the negative emotion is. So, okay, whatever negative emotion is there, if it's in the bones, it's generally going to be resentment. If it's in the hip, if it's in the muscles, it's generally going to be um, guilt. If it's in the ligaments, it's going to be control issues, roughly. But again, the, there's a lot of groups. You know, there's your family is a group. Cool. You know, your siblings are a group. Okay. Makes no sense. All right. All right. Um, so, I'm going back now with the read. So yeah, Kate, if you want to ask a question, type it in, and we'll have a look. Um, thank you for the lovely comments. You know, so how, uh, all this stuff about anger, guys, how do we help anger? We conquer it with love. Send them love. See them as loving. See, stop, you know, and, and stop seeing the anger as a bad thing. A lot of people need to be angry because they've been in, they've been in um, poor me in, in pity for too long. Somebody in pity needs to get to anger because anger is a higher vibration. Listen, to Abraham says this often. Anger is a higher vibration than, than pity or poor me. And so the anger is a temporary stepping stone that some people, the problem is people like to stay there and they let the anger drive things and it goes out in all different directions. We want to turn the anger into courage and then we use the courage to lift ourselves up to the heart, which is still forceful, but it's guided. It's not an unguided missile, it's guided missile. So sometimes we've got to use this anger to get ourselves out of apathy, to get ourselves out of pity. So don't always judge the anger. 
Okay. Um, so Kate's, Kate's question was about someone else. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Kate, I'm not laughing at you. Um, you are, but well, <laughs> we're laughing at all of us. We're laughing at all of us, right? <laughs> this, this innate desire to help other people, right? So, so, what, <laughs> so your, I guess your concern that he's struggling with lack of support, yeah, right. That's that's what you're identifying yeah. with your friend that's moved into a remote town in New South Wales as a person. Yeah. He's struggling with lack of support. Right. So, where are you struggling with lack yeah. of support? And how do you know? And guys, and again, this is like what we call qualifying. How do you know these people are doing that? We don't know because hmm. they might be milking us. He might only every time you talk to him, he's bringing this issue up because he knows you're a, you're a helper, you're an enabler, right? So when you don't help properly, you become an enabler. When you help properly, it's it's a good thing. But um, you don't know that you know the the dynamic between you and somebody else. You know, I've done this and I've had relationships where I didn't think. Well, I didn't think this person was mean at all because, you know, I'd been around her for so long every day for fucking years. And people used to say well, she was mean. And I'm like, this, you don't understand this person. There's not a mean bone in the body, right? And even my kids said it. And I, I just couldn't get it. And one day, and it was like what I realised was when my frequency, when she was in my, in my range around me, she wasn't. She just wasn't because she was able to use my frequency to bring hers up. As soon as I left... And it dropped down, her meanness would come out and it would shoot at everyone. But I could never see it because as soon as I was there, it wasn't like she was hiding it. it wasn't even she was just using my frequency to bolster hers up. So yeah. these lack of support, these things, some people are, are milking you, you know. So again, the same way as we said it to others, and I'm sure that's why he hesitated putting it up there, is just see him as supported. Yeah. Just keep visualizing him as their God self. See him, just picture them, you know, picture these people that we're worried about. Picture the opposite of what we're seeing them. Yeah. So if they need support, if they're angry, picture them loving. Just sit there and picture them skipping through the park and they're picking flowers and patting lions or something. <laughs> I don't know. You know, make make it ridiculous like you know, that. And, because... and if and if he's your son, picture picture all the happy times that yeah. he has. Yeah. You know, go back to those memories. You're... Just because he's older doesn't yeah. doesn't change anything. It's and still you know, the same being. Still the picture same. Picture their soul souls shining out. Right? Picture them shining from the inside the out. Right. The more you do that, so every time. You worry about whatever you're worried about with them, mm. picture the opposite. Sit yeah. there and visualize it and picture them and just, you know, try and put some emotion into it. That's why I make, make it silly sometimes. Make it because the silliness will put the emotion into it. Oh, look at him skipping through. He's picking daisies and patting lions. Yeah, you know, it's like, up. it's just like, you yeah. know, <laughs> make it a, almost like a joke. And the yeah. more you do that, yeah. you know, it's that's the only thing that's so so going to help. Right? So the 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 worry or the concern, right? I don't. I want to. Wouldn't quite call it worry. The concern you have, right? That energy that you're feeding that concern, yeah. is what's you know it's gonna amplifying. Add, it's going to yeah. add to. Yeah. Um, it's not what, necessarily causing it's, it. It's going to add to what he may or may not have. He yeah. may not have concern, is what John said, yeah, right? Yeah. So so you might be creating a concern yeah. energy and giving it to him, right? And then this pattern, this bounce back's been happening for so long. Yeah. He, you walk into the room, he was happy as Larry. Yeah. He, you walk in the room, he's so used to you being concerned. He's yeah. like, is she going to oh, be concerned? Okay. You, he, you, then you feel he's concerned about your concern. Yeah. And this shit just goes, goes, goes on, on, right? right? So, so you know, <laughs> if 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 you can see that as a possibility of happening, yeah. I, I fucking what see if, it. You know? I've created it many times, right? I fucking know this shit. Right? We've created it between, each, we've other, created between each other many times, right? All these fucking worry shit that we create. Hear of it, right? You know, it's fucking like... bullshit. Fuck off to you and your fucking worry. Right? You go fuck yourself with your fuck worry, you. right? Coming to the door, checking. Is he worried? Is he worried? If it's possible, you can do that and create a fucking energy of concern and give it to someone. Yeah. You can do the opposite, right? Yeah, you exactly. can create an energy of love and an yeah. energy of support and, and an energy take, of harmony. It'll take and, repetition. And give it to them. Okay, here you go. Here's, a, here's the complete opposite frequency of yeah. energy. It'll take repetition if it's you been know? an old pattern that's been gone. So it takes, you know, this is like, it takes an effort to do this, guys. Yeah. Um, but it works, right? Yeah. If you're willing to do it, okay. Okay. So if you're going to walk in the door and you're going to see them, or you're going to pick up the phone, don't answer the phone. Picture this first and then ring them back. If you're going to walk in the door, just picture them like fucking dancing around naked in the lounge room or something. I don't know. Again, something ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> Mel, we just hit, hit in there with Mel. She's like, oh, shit, that's what I do. <laughs> yeah. No, it's fucked up, eh? But you, you, you don't need to see, um Kate's just saying she hasn't seen him live seven hours away. But again, you, you don't, don't know to. what you don't know what he's like when he's not talking to you. You don't mm. know what he's like when he's not around, you know? And you don't know if he's not creating that. And so, but... You don't need to be near them. I, my other son lives in Queensland. I'm in Melbourne. Mm. I know exactly what he's going through. I know when he's fucking. <laughs> well, I'm the same know. with my mum, right? <laughs> so I, I don't need to worry up when I'm like, fuck, people, mum's they, about to call. <laughs> people that we've got, you know, they've got our phone number, right? We don't need to. 
we know as soon as they're going through something, you know. They, my, my family always knew when I went on to a spiritual retreat because they'd all be going, are you all right? Are you all right? It's like because I've cut off everyone. I go into my own space and everyone thinks I've fucking died because you know, they're so used to feeling me. I'll get calls from all over the country. Are you all right? Are you all right? Well, I'm fine. I'm just fucking in a retreat, okay? So right. you, you'll feel them. And, and this is why this doesn't matter when you do this thing, this visualising them as perfect, as divinely guided and yourself you know mm. and th this is why you got to say what if i've accidentally been creating that yeah with my worry or if not creating it at least what you have done at least is amplified it yeah. you might not have created it but you might have actually created it by accident by you know accident. not on purpose yeah out of concern from a genuine concern you, know, you, you are his mother yeah right? so out of that genuine mother-son relationship yeah. right so it's come from a from an, an innocence, right? Yeah. Like a a, a loving yeah, point yeah, of view, yeah, a loving right? point of view. But, you know, but it's just this is energy and frequency, and this is what we're in, and this is what this fucking moment in time is trying to show us, guys. This is what the fucking coronavirus. <laughs> this is this is the this crescendo is, of this is the whole where we're at. Five G, all this stuff is trying yeah. to show us that we are frequency beings, yeah. and we create it, mm. and we can uncreate it. Therefore, <laughs> all right. our, our picturing and our visualizing does Amanda, all that. Amanda Jane. A couple of things on this one, man, Jane. <laughs> I lack confidence. That's a mad command. Yeah. I lack confidence. Is that fear-based? Anything oh, yeah. lack is fear-based for starters, right? Oh, yeah. And I can guarantee you, you ask this question on this fucking live, you don't lack confidence. You don't lack confidence at all, <laughs> right, for starters. No one would ask that question on this live if they lack confidence. <laughs> I lack confidence. Is that fear-based? It's like, mm -hmm. where do you lack confidence? <laughs> Maybe you lack confidence in yeah, certain, in certain areas, areas for a good reason. Yep. Because your soul, your inner being is trying to get you to fucking change and not go down those areas. So sometimes the lacking confidence is actually a positive thing. It's actually our soul trying to protect us from, or trying to get us out of a particular avenue or, um, you know, aspect of life, you know. And it's like, and maybe it's just in the early days when we get in connection with the, the oneness spirit and we get in connection, you know, what we call the, you know, the observer, Satori, whatever, you've got to shut the fuck up, you know, <laughs> so, for a whole year nearly. <laughs> and you've got to reobserve from this new space that is really you that's always been there. So it's not new. It's, it's forever old. Mm. It's like, but it feels new to you. And so, you know, sometimes it's it's that as well. You're learning that all these people are talking too much and everything else. And it's, so it's, you know, what it is is you don't lack confidence. And, yes, it's kind of fear-based, but it seems like it's a positive fear. Yep. You're misidentifying it. You're trying to fix the wrong thing. Yep. And you're, because you misidentify as lack of confidence when it's get me fucking out of this shit. <laughs> get me out of these, these, I mean, there's certain avenues in your life that you just need yeah. to get the fuck out you of. Know, but, but be That's, careful with your words, okay? Yeah. As we're saying, right? Just as your thoughts can create that concern yeah. energy bubble that we just yeah. spoke about, your words can also yeah. block a lot of shit they out of your, filters, your subconscious mind. Subconscious, right? so. I lack confidence. Yeah. That's yeah. a pretty strong statement. Right? Seems like so. It what we do? Like, this right? is why we change our word into "what if maybe." Seems like I lack confidence. Looks like I lack confidence. Hang on. As soon as you say that, mm. what if I don't lack as much what confidence I, as I yeah. thought? Mm. Then you'll start seeing areas where you don't. Oh well, I don't lack confidence there. I fucking tell these people what I think. <laughs> I fucking oh, and then then all of a sudden that does, undoes that filter. Yeah. And that's this is an amazing one, guys. When you do it, when you catch one like that, yep. where you, where it's become a filter across the whole thing. And you go, what if I what you what if I don't lack confidence everywhere? What if I you know, so you gotta do those what ifs. It's yeah. like so, so or it seems like I lack confidence, it looks like I lack confidence. I'm pretty sure I lack confidence, but I don't know. And then that can actually open up the door and change. Yeah, a lot you know, of that what stuff. if what okay, so if, if I if I think I might lack confidence, maybe it's only in one or two areas. Maybe it's not lacking confidence everywhere. What if that's true, right? That's yeah. that questioning mind, right? And unlock that filter, yeah. right? And then you really start to see um, yeah. what you're saying. So Kate just said that it's about her son, and she goes, I'm the positive, he's the negative. But I'm um, sorry, Kate, you failed. <laughs> <laughs> the positive person can't say that. So you just <laughs> fucked up in time. <laughs> sorry to say that. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> I read <you're>, that before. <laughs> you're not the positive. And we're, and we're joking about this yeah. again. This is not your fault. So what I'm taking you. I'm not attacking you. Don't take it like that. Yeah. It's that thought That thought pattern. Yeah. I'm the positive. He's the negative. That's duality. Yeah. Duality is the negative. Yeah. Right and wrong is the negative. So the fact that you say that, and you don't probably even believe that, right? But the fact that you've said that, that showed me that that's in your emotions. Yeah. There's the problem right there. Yeah. 
he might be in the negative and you might be in the positive in that situation, yeah. but I'm the positive, he's the negative, yeah. I'm the, he's the, that just exposed everything. Yeah. The emotions there are causing a big problem with this. I'm in the positive, he's in the negative, but what about if your positive is being too positive and being too forceful and pushed on him, causing his negative to resist and react back? Yeah. Then you are actually the negative. Yeah. Your positive is the negative. Oh, oh. it's like, you know, Surprise. He, he, he didn't mean that. You didn't mean that at all. But this is how our positive becomes a negative because if we keep it in duality, yeah. we keep pushing right and wrong, we're pushing our opinion. Therefore, it, they're always, you know, if you want to be in oneness, not duality, then you're always wrong and they're always right because you don't believe in right and wrong. In oneness, we don't believe in right and wrong. We don't believe in good and bad. So if we don't believe in right and wrong and we don't believe in good and bad and then we say we're right and we're good, we're fucking wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Therefore, we're wrong. <laughs> so it's like, you know, being neutral and being, you know, not even being positive, but being positive is not like saying positive and everything else. Being positive is just da -da 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 -da, right? It's not saying positive. It's not, you know, there's no judgment. There's no... It's just like, yeah, cool. I like that. I don't like that. So uh, so you've typed, so what do I do? So it feels like you've maybe opened to the possibility yeah, of that. Yeah. You've, you've, you're creating this something. You just right? started it right there. Right? So perfect that's, that's question. It. That's, that's, that's it. So the, the, fir the first thing, right? The first thing, the first is, thing to is to do what you just did. just to do what you just did, right? You've, you've, you've had a yeah. realization, yeah. right? At some level, you've just yeah. gone, yeah. fuck. Yeah. Right. So what do I do? That's the first step. They go, this is, this is for everyone, right? That was a genuine, we can feel it. Yeah. That's genuine. That's it. That's it. That's Even it. if it's a thousand miles journey, that is the biggest right. step right there. Because so now you go, okay, so you need to be neutral. Mm. What we call neutral, right? And neutral doesn't mean passive. Neutral doesn't mean apath apathetic. Neutral means not looking at right and wrong, not mm. looking at good and bad. Looking at balance. How do I balance it? Okay. Oh, chuck open. <laughs> yeah. How do I balance it? Ask balance. What's yeah. balance What's here? Balance. So, you know, your, my, your extra positive could be causing him to go extra negative just to cause balance between the two of you. Yep. So just by going neutral and not seeing as right or wrong, not seeing as good or bad, just observing, standing there looking at it like you're looking at ants or mm. like you're looking at clouds, that's the next step. Yep. Start doing that. Stop these judgments of it being right or wrong, it being good or bad. Mm. That means right or wrong, good or bad. So, so, you know, so far you're thinking he's negative? Yeah. That doesn't mean start thinking he's positive. Yeah, yeah. It means going into the middle, into the neutral. What if What's it's the not balance? True, right? What's, What's the, balance? the balance point? Yeah. Okay, so what if he's not negative or positive? Mm. What if he's just reacting to something that I don't know? Yeah. What if, you know, what if, yeah. where's the balance point between us? Where's the balance you know, point? And, and the trick here is like with one of these like genuine realizations, the beauty of it, right, is is you've kind of cracked it a little yeah, bit, right? Yeah, you've cracked the fucking egg big time. You put a crack in it, right? <laughs> so the next time you have this thought process that comes up, yeah. right, you're also going to remember this point, yeah. right? And you're going to go, oh, fuck, hang on. <laughs> okay, go neutral to that. Yeah, right. So, what body, yeah. right? That's that's yeah. kind of what happens when you have these realizations. You crack it open. Yeah, so right? we, we feel it, right? So when you ask these questions, I can feel it because what we started this was if it feels heavy, that's a lie. So a lot of this stuff you say feels heavy as fuck, right? And that's how I know. Okay, well, whatever you said there, that's wrong, right? That's 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 the thing that's not wrong, but that's the thing that's causing the wrongness, right? And it's like so then we feel that, and then so when you when you say something like that's what I do, we get this. Oh, yeah, it's like this. Super, hallelujah. Super <laughs> it's like so now that's going to create it, and the, and that question, and then it's like okay, so how do I get neutral to this? How do I not see it? Where's the balance point? Where's the balance point between me and him? Yeah. How do I just look at it and go? I wonder what it is. Yeah. Stop judging it as right or wrong. Yeah. Right or wrong. Don't. It's like look at it. Okay. If a kid's having a temper tantrum, is it right or wrong? I don't know. Maybe that's a balance that he needs. Yeah. It's like, you know, if he keeps doing it, and that maybe there's a point where you can see that it's wrong. But at first you've got to go, well, I don't know, maybe it's some sort of balance happening. And it's uh anyway, that's um, you know, congratulations, Kate, because that's yeah. a real genuine opening there. Well done. And it's a, a start, we can feel it. Um, and that's it. You just keep going. So what do I do? What do I do? Stop judging, stop thinking you know what's needed. Stop yeah. thinking that it's, you know, just because this action is happening, that that's bad or that's wrong. It could be some sort of balance. 
Okay, guys. Well, that's that's about it for this week. Remember, on Thursday night, we've got our live meditations. Join our group meditation so online. We had about six or eight of his on last week, and they loved it. Um, it's also on our YouTube, so if you want to see what... From last week? From last week. Um, yep. So you can go and do that one a couple of times if you want. If you want to see what it's like, have a look at our YouTube. Well, I think it's on our it's in our group that John's about to put up there as well. Um, so you'll yeah you can join the group. Um, the links will be on here. We'll put any links on the bottom here and the top later on as well. So if you want to um, join the meditation live on Thursday nights, we do Pretty that sure at the same fun. time. Um, same time Thursday night. And so I just posted a link to our. Um, I think I posted a link to our Facebook <laughs> our Facebook site. So go to our yeah. Facebook site. We've got a group we created on that page, which is our online meditation group. Yeah. If you're interested, just become a member of that group, and you will get notified when we start eight thirty um, Australian night. Eastern Standard Time on Thursday night this week. Yeah. Okay, guys. Alrighty. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks, guys. Have a great week. Bye.